We installed our butcher block countertops almost one year ago today. And honestly, we couldn't be happier. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the look, our overall experience, the costs, the installation, durability, the upkeep, and lastly, the overall versatility. As someone that does a cooking channel, I have butcher block countertops and I absolutely love them and they get used every single day. And guess what? I've got two little ones that try to destroy it every day as well. We spend a ton of time in our kitchen. It's probably the most used room in our home. We do a ton of entertaining, a lot of parties. And like I said earlier, I do a YouTube cooking show. So we do a lot of cooking in here as well. So in this past year, this butcher block countertop has been used every single day in multiple ways. This butcher block is called Hevia or Hevia. I'm not sure the correct pronunciation, but it is rubber wood. We decided on the rubber wood, number one, because of budget. It was extremely cheap. This entire kitchen, island included, was just under $1,000 to do this entire spot. And we did it ourselves. We installed it ourselves with the assistance of some very helpful friends. In our brains, the, this countertop was a temporary solution for a renovation that we really needed to make in our kitchen because we bought our house two years ago. It was built in 1984 and the kitchen was definitely stuck in 1984 and elements of it still are, but we're getting to that. There actually used to be a wall of cupboards here that we removed. This was not an island and we turned it into an island. So we actually added a lot of real estate in the area that we use most right here for all of our prep work. And what we thought was a temporary solution has turned into what will most likely be a full kitchen renovation in seven to 10 years that we will love to incorporate our butcher block countertops that we currently have into a full renovation. So what was temporary has become really a permanent solution for us. Now, what type of person is butcher block countertop for? If you have a ton of natural light in your space like we do, you will be thrilled with how butcher block countertop accents your space and enhances it. It really does enhance it. If you're on a tight budget, there is no better solution. If you prefer a rustic or natural look, these countertops are certainly the way to go. If you're into DIY projects and you love to do stuff yourself, this is a really easy project. I would just suggest the help of a buddy, maybe two buddies. If you like the idea of being able to completely change the look of your kitchen, say every three years, butcher block countertops are very versatile. All it takes is a little sanding, a new stain, a new coating of sealant, you're off with a brand new kitchen every three years with just a little bit of work. Now we have had granite in our past two homes and we love it. Granite is, is wonderful. It is at least double the cost of the Hevia butcher block countertops. There are more expensive butcher blocks. Oak, white oak, hickory, all of those hardwoods are much more expensive than the rubber wood, but it just depends on what you like. The rubber wood, we loved, we love the cost of it, we love the durability, and also a fun fact about rubber wood is it is the most sustainable hardwood for countertops. It comes from the latex tree and where latex trees are grown, they grow so fast. So fast, in fact, that once they chop them down, when they have outlived their latex producing cycle, they are produced right into these hardwood countertops, among other things as well, but mostly into these hardwood countertops. And then they grow so fast again that they're often producing latex already and adding more oxygen to the environment. So a very sustainable kitchen upgrade. How sustainable is granite? Well, you carve it out of a mountain, folks, if that is important to you. Let's talk about budget. At the time of purchasing this a year ago, the six foot island, a 12 foot slab, and a four foot slab, I'll get into why we had to do this, and a six foot slab was just under $1,000. At the time of buying them, Home Depot was much cheaper than Lowe's when it came to the, the rubber wood sections. So just something to keep in mind, check both places and compare pricing. And when you do look at them, make sure that there's no dents or cuts in them. Uh, that can happen as well. Mine does have a nice big dent in it right here. You only see it when you really look for it though, so it really doesn't bother me. The conditioner and the sealer that we used put us right around $1,100 in total net costs which for a massive change like, like a countertop can make in your kitchen, $1,100, I don't wanna say it's nothing, but it's, it is definitely a huge impact for a very small budget. 
This island was a six foot slab and we actually needed an eight foot slab, but they, I could not find a rubber wood eight foot island depth top. So I had to go with a six foot, which led us into creating kind of a wild angle here, but it works. It works really well. This might've been a 10 foot slab, I correct myself. This 10 foot slab goes all the way to here. And it was also the longest one we could get. And this six foot slab here uh, has a 90 degree angle cut into it in the corner with a four foot slab that is angled like so to fit that piece. And that was probably the hardest decision to make is where we wanna put the seam in relation to the sink. That is very important because of water seepage in the seams. And quite honestly, it's done a really good job. How did we install it? Well, my buddy had a track saw. I invited him over with the lure of a Cajun reverse seared three inch thick ribeye, maybe a few beers, maybe some bourbon. I don't know, I don't know, maybe you weren't there. I, I, I don't have any pictures of it. I actually wish I had taken some footage of the installation process. It was a very busy time for us and I didn't, I'm sad that I didn't, but with the help of friends and a very nice track saw to make these cuts beautifully straight, we were able to cut it and install it in one and a half days. And that includes sealing the bottom of it out in the garage. So we sealed the bottom of it with a spray shellac. So where the dishwasher is, where the sink is, the bottom is moisture sealed, which you definitely must do, especially if you have a dishwasher. So when we made our cuts, our diagonal cuts and our straight cuts, we joined them with biscuits and wood glue. And you'll notice that you can kind of see our seam a little bit. That's my mistake after, in, after sealing. I didn't do a good enough job of cleaning out the sawdust that was in, in between the cracks here. And when you don't do that good of a job, that sawdust can turn dark when you put a stain on it or your sealant or whatever you're using to finish your wood. So keep in mind, make sure you clean that, your seams out real good. I'll take care of that when I go to do another sanding, maybe after the fourth year to give it a refinish. Once we got it installed, we cut out the sink and then I gave it a really nice sanding. When you get these slabs in, they have very sharp edges. And when I say sharp, I mean they're just pointed edges. So I just took my sander and my palm sander and I just went right along the edge, a real smooth motion, just to kind of round that out. Now you can get fancy with it if you want to. I kept it real simple and just gave it a little bit of a rounded angle and it's wonderful. It does not hurt to lean against. You don't want to smack your face on it, obviously. Once I got that sanded, I got it all brushed off and vacuumed up with the shop vac. And then I added a coat of wood conditioner. And this was probably the most exciting time because once I added that wood conditioner, all of the grain and all of the natural beauty in the wood really started to reveal itself. And we were like, whoa, this is gonna be better than we thought. And that was the first sign that we made the right decision. As soon as we added that in, we're like, okay, we're gonna be happy with this. And once we let that dry overnight, then I started the next day with water locks. When it comes to sealing your hardwood, you have two decisions to make. Are you going to go with a food safe sealer or are you going to go with a non-food safe sealer? A non-food safe sealer like water locks is going to seal it so that water will not penetrate the wood. Juices from meats will not penetrate into the wood with a sealer like water locks. It is an oil-based sealer and when you let it harden for three days, this is a year later and it still looks pretty much the same with some minor little marks in it, which I'll show you briefly. Like I said, that's not food safe. Now, if you want to do a food safe, I would recommend a polymerized tongue oil. Now, we didn't do that because a tongue oil is going to really darken the surface of the wood. And as you can see behind us, we actually have some darker cabinets that we're going to paint eventually, but I'm quite honestly, I don't know when we're gonna to get to that. But we didn't want to darken the space. We wanted to brighten the space. So we went with the wood conditioner. I went two coatings with the matte finish water locks and then two coatings of the high gloss water locks finish. And that brought it right up. And I can tell you, get a thick staining sponge if you're going to use either of those stains, a tongue oil or anything, and put it on heavy and let it settle on its own. Tongue oil, you can get some bubbles, so you may have to, to sand in between some coats. I definitely gave it a light sanding in between the coats of water locks as well. And this is how it turned out. 
and we, and like I keep saying, we absolutely love it. So that is how we finished it, water locks. And I'll put links to all this stuff in the description below. Durability, like I mentioned earlier, we have young children and they are very good at destroying things. If you have kids of your own, you can attest to this fact. Daily, they play with Play-Doh up here. They play with a little fake sink and they do things with actually running water and water gets all over it. And there is just juice on it. There's strawberries, there's oranges, there's lemons. <laughs> Anything that you could imagine that a child could do has been done to this countertop in the first year. Is it durable? Yes. And that is another reason we went with the water lock sealant. Now, yes, it is a butcher block countertop. Should you use it as a butcher block with your knife directly on it? Absolutely not is my opinion. If you go with a food safe substance, you could, uh, but we keep knives away from it. It is a countertop after all. And if you had a granite countertop, you wouldn't use that as a butcher block. So why would you use your beautiful new butcher block as a cutting block? Just don't do it. Use another, use a real cutting block for it on top of it. Things that can eat away at your stain, citrus fruits, lemons, oranges, things like that. If you leave them on the surface for a little while, that acid from the citrus fruit can eat away even at a substance like water locks, but it's going to take a very long time. So just, if you see it laying there, pick it up, wipe it off with, some, with a wet sponge. Easy peasy. How do I clean the surface? I use a soft sponge and soap and water, that's it. Very easy to clean. Ever since switching to the hardwood countertops, we don't use anywhere near as many paper towels as we did before because paper towels are made of wood. They will scratch your surface if you're rubbing hard on them consistently. You see for yourself the result after one year. Now, you will have areas that will get more use. That's just a reality of a countertop. This is where we do the bulk of our prep work for every single meal. This is where our kids play. We sit over there and eat. We sit right below where the camera is and that's our dining room area. This area gets the most use, but the other area that's gonna get a lot of use will be your sink area. Before we decided on Butcher Block, I watched a ton of review videos on people complaining about the water area around the sink build up degrading the wood. This is not my experience, and that's because of the water locks. Uh, you can see for yourself here, there are no stains, there is no warping, there is nothing, there is no issues after the first year with this. Now, could that change after three years? Time will tell and, we'll, and I'll make a review video after three years, but I don't see that happening. And if it does, the great thing about them is you, you can give it a light sanding, clean it off, restain it, you're done. And that brings me to the versatility of it. Say you get your countertops finished and you don't like the look of them. Well, shit, no problem. Let everything dry, let everything cure. It's gonna take a couple months. Oh, that's the other thing with water locks. You do need to let it cure for three months before you set anything on top of it, like a butcher block, like a, like a knife block or any kind of things, because it will leave indentations in it. So let that cure fully. You'll probably be fine after 30 days. We went three months just to be safe. Back to the durability, uh, another great thing about hardwood and the, the natural beauty of the hardwood is it's kind of busy. It's busy in like a calm kind of way because it's natural maybe, I don't know. That's just, I'm just spitballing here. But it's busy so that even if there are marks in it or little, say you get a stain, it's kind of busy and when you look at it from afar, you really don't see those marks or stains unless you look really closely. So that's something to keep in mind as far as like, you know, the overall look and feel when you start to really use your surface. So upkeep and versatility, like I said, soap and water, clean it up. If you get a big puddle of water sitting there, just clean it up. Like that's, that's all there is to it. Like if you're gonna let water sit, maybe butcher block countertops with a non water sealed finish is probably not the best solution for you. I would go with a fully water sealed solution like the water locks. Some people finish their butcher block countertops with mineral oil. If you do this, you will most likely be unsatisfied in those areas that I talked about, like the sink. Mineral oil will not deflect the water. It'll keep the wood moist to a certain point, but that water is going to take over eventually. I would definitely suggest a tongue oil that will reflect the water plenty more and, and for much longer than a mineral oil ever would. So in closing, we absolutely love the effect that the butcher block countertops have made in our kitchen and 
we will be keeping them for the long haul. So we have many more kitchen updates to keep going with. If I missed anything or if you have any questions for me, please let me know in the comment section below. I will answer you as quickly as I possibly can. And if you're interested in butcher block countertops, I say give them a try, give them a look and see if they're gonna be right for your kitchen. As always, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.